Our third speaker is addressing female genital mutilation. After her talk, we'll be joined by respondents Eva Margaret Magnus Dautar and Sirun Daniels Dautar. Our speaker, Nimko Ali, is a British Somali feminist, activist, and director of the Daughters of Eve, an organization she co-founded to end female genital mutilation. This survivor-led group is helping to transform the approach to ending female genital mutilation. Her goal is to end FGM in one generation. Please welcome Nimko Ali. Um, thank you very much for inviting me, and I'm honoured to be sharing the platform with women I've looked up to for, um, for ages. I'm from the um, hashtag generation of activism, so I'm going to take a little bit of a different kind of format in terms of how I'm going to present this. I'm going to talk for four minutes to preface the, um, the video that I'm going to show you, which is ultimately going to talk about FGM by another name, is ultimately FGM. At the age of seven, um, I was subjected to female genital mutilation, what the World Health Organization defines as any form of cutting or injury to the female genitalia for non-medical reasoning. And within that kind of definition, they have four different types of FGM. In, um, sorry. Oh, sorry, okay. I will speak a little bit slower. This, I get this all the time, okay. So, um, four years before I had FGM in 1985, the, um, the UK passed legislation in order to make it illegal. And then in 2013, this legislation was amended in order to make extraterritorial FGM illegal because at the time it was only if it happened within the UK. But there are two problematic things within the definition of what FGM is within the FGM legislation in, in, in the UK. First of all, it says that girls shall include women, so there is no consensual age of when FGM can happen. But then it prefaces that by talking about what FGM is and when it's a crime. FGM is only a crime when it happens for cultural reasoning, and culture is defined within the legislation as the 20 African countries where FGM is common, and by common I mean up to 30%. So ultimately, it meant that no woman from an, F um, from, from, from an FGM affected population can ever consent to FGM, but if she was not, from an FGM practicing community than she ultimately could. So this was a problematic thing for me for in 2010 when I started campaigning with UK Feminista against the third largest form of cosmetic surgery within the UK, labioplasty. What is labioplasty? It is actually type 1 FGM, which is the clitoris unhooding, or type 2 FGM, which is the trimming of the labia. But if you are not from an FGM practicing community from the 28 countries in Africa, it is not FGM. So um, basically, the video that I'm going to show you um, prefaces what the conversation I'm having. Is it going to work? Have we got the video? If not, I'm going to have to talk for 15 minutes. <laughs> Dubs of a JJ, JJ, profit from problems that don't exist. Oh, hi there. Tonight, Dr. Vijay J would like to show all you enterprising doctors out there how to expand your market and your wallet <laughs> by privatizing those privates. Privatize those privates. Confused? Excited? Let's bring on assistant Steve. Steve, how does your wife feel about her private parts? Pretty good? <laughs> well, Dr. Vijay J can soon fix that. It's time to plant that seed of discontent. Plant that seed. Steve, there's something missing from this scene. Playboy magazines. Sweet. <laughs> Try not to get too excited, Steve. In your private's practice, Playboy magazines aren't porn for you. They're reference material for women. Whoa! Let me explain. Thanks to less of these, 
women are now seeing their own lady bits. And thanks to the popularity of these, they're seeing how other women look down there and getting insecure about what's normal, or as we like to put it, educated. I understand. The labia are airbrushed out of porn, so really we're not seeing what's normal at all. Can Dr. Vijay J help it if this is what women ask for? Dr. VJJ does not solve problems. He makes the most of them. Hit it, Steve. Voila! Your website will feature all kinds of naughty, nasty, before images all fixed up into happy, generic, after images thanks to you. These, Steve, combined with porn, that is, reference material, form what Dr. VJJ calls the twin seeds of discontent and will have women educated about their karate coochies in no time. What's this called? That's a good question, Steve. To answer it, we need the second step in privatizing those privates. Make it science. Make it science. Ouch! Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Steve, this is how not to talk about, or as Dr. VJJ would say, market what we do. Isn't that called female genital mutilation? Female genital cosmetic surgery, yes. Otherwise known as cosmetic gynecology. Ah, here it is. It's important to wrap your private's practice in medical terminology, making what we do scientific, giving us legitimacy. It also helps to differentiate what we do down there from what they do down there. You can also throw in the words laser, designer, expert to really make things hot, hot, hot. But wait, isn't it research, not words, that make science? Steve raises an important point. If anyone asks you about research, run. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, the research that's important for Dr. VJJ is the three W's, what women want. It's useful to have a satisfied customer or patient in these sticky situations. But what about the risks involved? The benefits oh, outweigh the risks, Steve. <laughs> what benefits? You can't put a number on satisfying women's wants. But aren't we creating those wants? Let's move on to the third essential step of privatizing those privates. A little ruby rule I like to call, oh, make it pink. Lady bits can be blamed for a whole host of issues. Low self-esteem, negative body image, intimacy issues, bad sex, yeah! Woo! Marital problems, being single. Again, be creative. A little bit of a stretch is A-OK -okay here. Let me help your labia help you. Nice, Steve. Think of yourself as a vaginal coach. Enhance your wife life with vaginal coaching. That's incredible. Who would have thought that all these complicated issues are simply because of women's genitals? Isn't it? You know what else women like? Different shades of pinks, purples, swirly curves, and lettering. We highly recommend these for your marketing. The essence of Dr. Vijayjay's business of medicine. Oh, silhouettes. Lots of silhouettes. Happy couples, strategically placed wedding rings, celebrities, think spa, rejuvenation, self-love. Flowers are also another way of hinting to down there without being offensive. Isn't that kind of cliched and patronizing? You're right, Steve. This is the 21st century. Women are intelligent adults. Let's move on to the fourth stage of privatizing those privates. That's right, we're gonna make it feminist. Make it feminist. Remember how we used words in step two to make it science? Step four is similar, but the words are different. Let's see how Miss F responds to cosmetogynecology when it's not feminist. Mm. Designer laser vaginal rejuvenation? Ugh, stupid sexist men telling me how I should look. Whoa, 
That didn't go too well, did it? Steve, make it feminist. Hmm, designer laser vaginal rejuvenation? But wait, this is about what I want. Boom! You see how sassed up and liberated old Prudy Judy feels? Dr. VJJ did that. Here's how. We're not telling women what's wrong. They've had enough of that. We're providing what women want. Didn't you say earlier that- We are is... empowering them with knowledge, choices, and alternatives. Fucking unbelievable. No pressure, just options. Sexy options. Wait, don't the procedures remove sexually sensitive labial tissue and desensitize the clitoris? How is that sexually empowering? Now there's something else that Steve has been missing to be really feminist. His own cooch. So if you don't have one of your own, at least have an assistant. Who does? Everyone knows that a woman can never be sexist. Think of it as a little bit of CYA. Cover your assets, that is. <laughs> ah, remember how we need to differentiate cosmetogynecology from what they do down there, down there? Well, make it feminist. Their women are oppressed by their ethnic culture. Our women, please. They're sassy, they're liberated. Look out, boys. You see how I'm supporting sexual agency without being sleazy? This is important. Try using pun and innuendo as opposed to being an outright dick. Dr. VJJ knows what it's like to be in a stigmatized profession. Just remember, we're warriors. Warriors in the war against oppressive beef curtains. Or rather, hypertrophic labia. So remember, to get that money you need, plant that seed, make it science, make it pink, make it feminist, and you too can turn your private practice into a private's practice. Join Dr. VJJ next week for Ouch, That Rash Looks Like Cash, giving you even more surefire tips and techniques to succeed in the business of medicine. So um, this is the problem that we face in the United Kingdom and in the post-feminist um, world that I seem to be living in, where FGM in Africa is horrific, it's barbaric, and it's within um, a control kind of context of patriarchy and ignorance. But here in the West, it's empowerment and it's enlightening and so on. So um, for, the, for the last um, five years, I've, I've been working on trying to redefine the conversation within the framework of violence against women and girls. It has been really successful, but it has been very problematic because Labioplasty, FGM by another name, is a very profitable business. So it's really interesting what, what you talked about choice and what women can do to their bodies, but I don't ultimately believe that there's choice in a vacuum when girls are constantly being fed about the imperfections of their bodies and then, being, and, and, and then paying um, £3,500, how much it costs in um, London, to have that, I think, is a very problematic thing. So my um, submission is just to say that there is no dif difference between the um, rusty laser... No, so the rusty... The rusty um, the rusty blade and the laser that, that's in Harley Street, and we really do need to have a conversation around women's bodies and where the word choice and culture ultimately sits.